guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're gonna be reacting to Europe versus America. Ten differences. Let's go. Number one, size. Europe was built a long time ago, and its big cities are narrow and small, and the streets were made for pedestrians and horses. Unlike our gas guzzling roads in the United States, uh, you can actually walk around it, and it's nice and compact. That's why Europeans can't fathom the fact that you can drive eight hours and still be in Texas. Flying home from Italy, I literally got a view of the entire country of Monaco outside my window. Like, what the heck? In America, ah. we tend to have a lot more living space, and our houses are definitely bigger and on more land, typically. Which comes with its ups and downs, because you certainly get a lot of neighborhoods that look like this. What about, like, houses in in Europe, I feel like we never hear about the houses in Europe, but we see about like the like the apartments. I think this is uh, maybe more like Western Europe. I hard to say, but then Lithuania houses are big though. Oh. But from like now, the houses are big as fuck. Uh, yeah, good question. Why? Why they always there, there, there's land in Lithuania. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, in Western Europe, maybe you know it's a little different, so I can't speak. But from from Lithuania, no, my grandparents' houses are huge. And this, and this. So Europe gas is also a lot more expensive right. than it is. The size of their houses here would be considered probably like small mansions, mm. if anything, you know. In the States, and so people have incentives to drive less. And when they do drive, they typically drive these goofy, tiny little cars. You definitely won't see any gas guzzling, lifted, six wheel pickup trucks with Trump <laughs> flags anywhere here in Europe. They're just not on my level. I don't know what to tell you. But it is not just the same thing. There was this one lady in one of the videos, she really loved Trump. I was like, that's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Or smaller in Europe, here. Yeah, Croatia, I think. Yeah. Because it's literally everything. For one, the people here are brutally suppressed by smaller food and drink portions, which is totally unfathomable to me. I mean, how could you? That's that's not a meal. That's a that's a snack. That's, that's what I snack. get when going to the to the pantry at two a.m. I don't know. It's also fitting. I'm literally recording in the smallest country in the world right now, the Vatican. But all the countries in Europe are pretty much smaller. I mean, look at look at the map. You can. It's like yeah. To give you an idea of just how much smaller living in Europe is than the United States, uh, just take a look at the oh. last time. Remember, they showed us. They just showed us. Europe is being the same size as the United States of America. Yeah, well, they so are, what is well, he showing us now that he's, he's making his argument? You know, you can yeah, fit, you can make facts fit your yeah, narrative a little that, bit. That's a little annoying for me. Europe is slightly that. bigger than America yeah, based on the video we did yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Population density. So but at the same time, you are comparing a continent versus a country. So. Mm. A little different. Other smaller things in Europe include the rooms, elevators. What else is smaller in Europe, Dad? People are smaller. The sizes are different. I have to buy large shirts here because because I'm American. You get the point. Oh. Really? Uh, the, the whole people argument, I think that's going to change a little because Ozempic really decreasing the, the fat people here nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's really working for people. Mm -hmm. And Europeans are getting fat too, though. Like, let's not, mm -hmm. you know. There's a, I was watching Love is Blind in Europe and I was, yeah, I was you, shocked. You know, Europeans are not as skinny as they used to be. Because I was so, expecting. You know. Yeah, and um, Americans are getting skinnier now with Ozempic too, so. Obviously, I'm sure there's Ozempic in Europe as well, so, you know, I, mm. that's, you know, but, yeah. Everything is smaller here. It's kind of weird, but kind of cool. I don't know. Difference number two, bathrooms. In America, it is more than common for us to just stop on the side of the road at any old business and do our business there and leave. That is mm. unless you live in the state of Florida, because you guys literally just was anywhere, apparently. Yeah, seriously, what is, what is wrong with you people? You can't really do that here. <laughs> if the business does have a bathroom, which most of them don't, typically only like coffee shops and restaurants. Is he from Florida? You to buy some I don't think so. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I think he's from Texas. That's so funny. Something before you use their... What's, what's wrong with peeing? Like, I feel like in Europe, it's also common to pee outside. I feel like always, like, you stop somewhere. If you need to pee, stop somewhere in the forest, mm. you will pee. If anything, here, it's weirder to do that, because here is like... You could get a ticket Yeah, you can, that. You can get know. indecent exposure, yeah. at least in Lithuania. And you can get the... You, need, the, you stop you in the get, forest, you, you take a prison. You can get a, a PDF charge. If it's close to, like, the, yeah. Yeah, the high school, the schools or something. Yeah, that, that's... I feel like Europe is it's easier. Thing. I, don't I don't know. Maybe things are different. I, don't know. I guess yes, things may have changed. And Western and you really country. <laughs> Western Europe also might be different from Eastern Europe. So laboratory facilities. It can be something small, like a little cup of espresso or whatever. But you still should buy something. It's like you know, it's polite. Oh yeah. Also, fair warning. Uh, carry toilet paper with you. We found that out the hard way. I will not elaborate anymore. Let's just say we will be you leaving Europe be doing with that outside. That's what you get. socks than we came with. They also don't have seats on a lot of the toilets here, so you gotta kind of... He's using socks. Yeah, well, unlike their American counterparts, European toilets have two buttons. One for poop what? and one for pee. The idea oh. is obviously to save a little bit of water, which I find pretty cute. Considering in America, I leave oh. my shower running between uses to keep the water warm. A lot of Southern European countries also use these booty blast bowls when they're done dropping the kids off at the pool. Difference number three, food. The food Why in Europe is... toilet and then not food, huh? I don't understand. This man is too funny for me. Absolutely <laughs> atrocious in comparison to what we have in the States. What they do is they don't load them up with preservatives so you can't get your Big Mac today and enjoy it in two months. 
Subway is making snack in history. When Tom the football officer finally He's funny. Finally <laughs> He's funny. It's, it's nothing short of communism over here. A lot of European countries even use a Nutra score to let you know how fast it will clog your arteries uh, and make you feel bad for eating um, everything that you eat. They had it in France. It was actually, it was pretty depressing looking at all the things I yeah. ate. It's a lot like my report card at school. Yeah. In America, our food is fast and efficient. I mean, shoot, just look at Wonder Bread, man. We call it that because we wonder what's in it. It's fantastic. Oh. Or how about Cheese Whiz? You're not going to find that anywhere else. Guaranteed. Plus, I never the, uh, tried America. this. I'm so skeptical yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, of cheese in the can. I've, I've never seen. This is a Reddit post. I saw this on Reddit. Uh, this is like a American yeah. section. One of the... One oh, of the stations and the weirdest um, thing, like half, I guess maybe it was a little different post because half of the things were like marshmallow related. Oh, this is like I feel like and box desserts. We don't even eat these things here in this. Oh, they have bounty. That's not American. Maybe uh, okay. Maybe. Or pop tarts, Twinkies, or cheese whiz and cereal and pop tarts. I know, like these. The foods he's shown very stereotypical. Not to say yeah. people don't eat it, but I, the Wonder Bread, the cheese, I've never had it in my mm -hmm. life. Yeah. They're right. Also, what in the name of freedom loving democracy? I think I've tried Wonder Bread before. I, I haven't. Scooter riding red, white, and blue apple pie. These patriotic ass brownies I found doing in Italy. Ha. Someone please tell me what kind of American experience these off brand generic team was. Yeah, that's that's what I saw on Reddit. These like every you see marshmallows, yeah. everything like marshmallow. So I think like they don't have marshmallows charms. in Europe. I don't know. They Do they have Lucky Charm cereal in Europe? Kellogg's? Is it no? I don't remember. Hmm? I never liked Lucky Charms anyway. I mean, like because I've never seen this in my life. Yeah. Difference number four, water. Much like the United States, most Europe. Yeah, I think the thing in Europe, there's a perception of the United States and the food and everything. So mm -hmm. then they do like the American sections. They do what the perception is and not what actually is. Countries have safe tap water. That is except for you guys uh, in the Balkans. Sorry. However, there are definitely water differences between the U.S. and Europe. For one, and this is a major one, check this out. Ah. Water bottle cap still attached. I like that. I like that the cap stays attached. I'm, I don't like that particularly. Well, then again, I don't. You know what I hate about the caps here? I don't. I, at least how I remember in Europe, it was different. Maybe things have changed. The tiny fucking caps they have here. I yeah. hate that shit. Yeah, this looks like a tiny cap to me. Then that means Europe has started doing that shit too. I hate that. How nice. A lot of Europeans say that that actually annoys them that they have their caps attached. But I think this is a fantastic I innovation. Like it. When it comes I to love restaurants, it because it can touch. It's like if you're a girl, you don't want it to like scrape up, touch your face like that, no? Yeah, but you don't lose the cap. Oh, half the time, mm -hmm. your cap goes like over a couch or so you have to go look for the cap. No, mm -hmm. it's good. It is not free like it is in the US. You actually have to pay for a bottle of water that usually looks something like this. Also, notice that they use a lot more glass over here than we do in the States. Europeans also enjoy sparkling water, which I deeply appreciate. When you ask for water here in a European restaurant, your waiter will more than likely follow up by asking you whether you want still or sparkling water. Now, when I order sparkling water in the United States, I'm usually uh, spat on and banned from the establishment. Difference number five age. Everything in Europe, like I said. Guys. If he was exaggerating, if, if you don't get it. No, about the being banned from the rest of Postpark of Water. That's, that's, that doesn't happen. It is old. I mean, seriously, this building behind me, the Basilica, is like that many years old. I don't know, I gotta look it up. And the United States is like 250. Europe is home to palaces, castles, and ancient ruins all over the continent. I mean, we have our ruins too, though. We have, you know, Detroit, St. Louis, uh, Baltimore. Plenty of nice places. Difference number six. Money. Most countries in the European Union use the euro, you definitely cannot see that, as their currency. The euro is worth a little bit more than the dollar at the time of me making this video. But depending on where you are in the continent, the cost of living might be a little bit more than, a little bit less than, or pretty close to the cost of living in the United States. For example, Norway is generally a lot more expensive than the US, while Portugal is generally pretty cheaper. Pretty cheaper, that's not the way you say that, but pretty cheaper. A lot cheaper, much cheaper. The Europeans also definitely pay a lot more in taxes than we do in the States. As a general rule of thumb, you can expect to lose about a third of your salary to the government in the United States, while here in Europe, in a lot of places, it's more like half or even more than half sometimes but they also get a lot more social services like tax funded education and free health care while in america you break it you buy it and it's not cheap either overall americans do tend to be a little bit richer than europeans they tend to make more money but the europeans do get more vacation and leisure time and nope not here all right all right yeah i'm something of a bad boy I wonder, uh, maybe you can film? But it seems like a public place. Yeah. That was interesting. Myself, you know, the Vatican police tried to tell me I... Oh, because it's Vatican, I guess. Oh. So. oh, okay. But why did he decide to film it in Vatican, though? 
Some damn well. Put it record, and you know, I kept my educational geography footage uh, when he told me not to. I'm something of a uh, criminal myself. Anyway, as I was about to say, uh, in Europe they use a lot more coins than we do here in the United States, and that's pretty much because they're actually useful over there. This here is a two euro coin, and I also have a one euro coin. We actually do have golden dollar coins here in the United States, but literally nobody uses them like ever. I genuinely believe most Americans would think that a dollar coin was fake if you showed it to them. You would have to like explain why you're paying one. with a dollar coin. A dollar coin, there was, I think. Saga Julia, and uh, she was a Native American who helped like the settlers really uh, travel over to the sea, the Pacific. If you handed it to someone, they'd be like, "Really, this? Just paying with with freaking card, dude? Nobody, nobody uses these ever." It does look pretty cool though. It's got the Statue of Liberty on it, and uh, you know, one dollar in America. It's expected that we leave like a twenty percent tip for our waiters at restaurants. We also tip our drivers, food delivery people, valet, the people who clean our hotel rooms, our barbers. You know that one I get though. I would be afraid to not tip my barber just next time I went. I just don't think I would get the same cut. In Europe, tipping isn't really expected. However, I do think they are starting to pick up the practice a little bit, at least with the tourists, because every time we ate, uh, the waiters asked us if we wanted to leave a tip. They did not. Have at all. Maybe it's just because we're American. I don't know what looks American about me. I mean, my Italian is absolutely perfecto, but I mean, beats me. Nonetheless, they asked for them anyway. But tipping is still definitely not viewed as a requirement like it is here in the U.S. Because if you don't tip in America, at least at restaurants, uh, you're going to get some funny looks. Or uh, next time you come back, there will be a wad of spit on your food. Unless the Ooh. service is just like actually atrocious. What's good is that in Europe, you're never really going to get that experience where they flip around the little tip tablet thing and stare into your soul as you choose the tip amount. It's absolutely it's horrible. Difference number seven, public transportation. In Europe, public transportation is in every big city. And yeah, I don't like that experience either when they what, turn the, the thing to the to, to, to tip. I don't like the tipping culture here. Uh, I do believe tipping should be uh, optional, not a mandatory. I don't, I don't mind tipping, but the pressure is like, how much are they going to I, I understand why mm -hmm. you, you know, you expect to tip because the tip uh, uh, workers, they make less than minimum mm -hmm. wage. So I get it. I, but I don't like the fact that you're expected to mm. Every country. Behind me, I'm about to take the metro station here in Rome. This is the station called Termini. In America, the closest thing we have to public transportation is, uh, nothing. In New York, you have a subway. That's about it. In Chicago, there's some other other stuff. I've heard the DC subway is, is okay. The metro there is okay. But that's about it. We got we got our three little ones. Maybe four somewhere else. I don't know. In addition to the metros here in the big... I mean, he's not doing a fair justice. I feel like he's a little biased towards Europe. Yes, European does have way better public transit, but to say that there's no public transit here is a way overstatement. Mm. There is public transit here. I think Miami. he's being sarcastic too. Yeah, I guess. But, you know, people watch it and then they think it's true. Mm. That's the thing. Because here in Miami, we do have that there's a trains, not all metros, but there's buses running, there's jitneys running. It's, it, it's not as good as Europe. Cabs, Ubers. Yeah, Europe that has way better developed. It's, it's a fact, there's no debate. But it's it still exists though, mm -hmm. and people are trying to expand it even further yeah, to, to yeah, make it better. So it's not like, well, the way he's making it sound is that, oh, there's just nothing and mm -hmm. that's it, you know. I just don't like that cities though europeans also have trains high-speed rail that they like to use whereas we uh, we don't we just drive everywhere all the time every single day usually these kinds of public transportation things are just funded through the taxes like earlier how i mentioned europeans pay more in taxes these are some of the reasons why europe's fastest train the trent italia frecciarossa has a top speed of nearly 250 miles per hour while america's fastest train the acela has a top speed of 150 miles per hour although on average both of those trains definitely travel slower than their top speeds let's, let's not be fooled here one thing about public transportation especially in the metro is that it can get pretty freaking crowded, dude. I was basically smelling this dude's head the entire ride, but for three euros, it was worth it, honestly. <laughs> and then we paid seven euros per ticket so for a 24-hour metro pass, and it was totally worth it. I mean, you could see the entire city, just hop on the metro. They have stations pretty much everywhere you need to go, so it is very convenient. Would recommend. Another thing is I was actually pretty impressed at how clean the metro stations were in the European cities that I've been to. I've only rode the metros in Paris and Rome, but those two were pretty good, honestly. I'm sure the locals would beg to differ, but... For me, like, they weren't that bad. The standards I'm going off of are New York, which mm. is uh, a very low bar to set, uh, to say the least. You gotta make sure you don't have ratatouille cooking up a lasagna in your hair when you get home from a ride in a New York subway. Difference number eight, smoking and alcohol. In Europe, it seems like everybody smokes cigarettes everywhere. It seems to be a very relaxed kind of thing over there. Maybe people see it as, like, cool. I don't know, man, honestly. In America, we definitely... Yeah, back in the day, it was cool, especially as you were younger, like, in, in high school, like, oh, it was cool to smoke. But, and, you know, mm -hmm. it's an addiction, so once you get it, then... The I guess you grow up, you realize it's not cool, it's not that easy mm -hmm. to quit. For us, yeah. I grew, we grew up like as small as elementary school, having people come to the school saying drugs are bad, 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 mm -hmm. don't smoke, no smoking. So it was like 
we learned that since we were young that is not cool so it's, to me i was never like drawn to those mm. things more of a stigma against smoking and that's not to say that people don't smoke in america because trust me they definitely do you know my jaw doesn't just drop every time i see someone smoking a cigarette over here but it is definitely viewed as like a more taboo kind of thing yeah. i don't know another thing is in america the legal drinking age is 21 whereas it's eight. it's looked down upon smoking is definitely yeah, down. yeah you look you look like you like on your own by yourself yeah. not, you're not gonna find a crew of people to smoke with here yeah. 18 in most of europe if not even lower in some countries and which is opposite I feel like in Europe, like it's like a, a club, like yeah, like a like a bonding experience. Mm -hmm. I will say though, it's, the weed is popular here, way more oh. smoking weed than that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how it is in Europe with weed, but I think in Europe it's stricter than here. Here, it's, weed is definitely popular. Obviously, not in public. People don't smoke just in a gas station, and not a gas station. I mean, a mm -hmm. bus station smoking mm -hmm. weed, but like in their private uh, times i would say we, we is way more popular here even though the drinking age is 18 uh it kind of isn't because nobody really cares what you do over there in europe they're very relaxed about it while here in america they still ask my middle-aged parents to show their ids when they order a drink difference number nine languages basically every single european except for the people in this general area is multilingual on top of their native languages people in europe typically learn american in school the best language obviously but then in belgium and switzerland they take it to a whole other level the waffle people speak French in the southern part of the country and Dutch in the northern part. They don't learn American, they learn British. The country. The skiing bankers speak French in the western part of the country, Italian in the very south of the country, a little bit of a language called Romanche, and German everywhere else. But hey, in America, some of us call it pop and some of us call it soda! Uh, so hey, you know, we've got that. There are only three reasons you will find a multilingual person in the United States. Number one, they were born in another country, you know, easy enough. Number two, their parents were born in another country and they just sort of learned the language, because why not? Or number three, a white dude married a Latina and had to learn Spanish to impress her parents. Those are the only three reasons. There are no exceptions to that. Believe it or not, the U.S. now has almost as many Spanish speakers as as Spain itself, but still 78% of Americans speak only English. <clears throat> Another thing is that when Europeans do speak English, it's almost always British English. So instead of using the correct... Yeah, that's what I just said, so why you said American? ...spelling of color, they will throw in the stupid ink-wasting U that the British like to use. I mean, what the heck, it's not color. Do you think you're more sophisticated than us? Yeah, I mean, you probably are, to be fair. Difference number 10, systems. In America, we use good old feet and miles, while Europeans use meters and kilometers, the metric system. Why is it called a foot, I hear you ask? Well, because it's a about the length of a foot. I'm not kidding. That's actually why it's called that. In Europe, everyone uses the metric system, which is based on the number 10. So for example, water freezes at a nice zero degrees Celsius and boils at a nice 100 degrees Celsius. In America, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I actually had to Google that because I did not remember the number. So fine, Europeans do better with temperature. I'll give them that. Now, even though my driver's license says I'm five feet and 10 inches tall, I'm actually 5'8". But could you imagine me saying I'm 1.7272 meters tall? Like, what? Why? Or even worse, I'm 172.7 centimeters. <laughs> Oh. I've been told people in the UK actually still use feet and inches for measurements, which makes sense considering they are the ones that actually created the imperial system way back when, but that's beyond the point. Europeans also travel vertically differently than we do here in the United States. When you get into your European coffin-sized hotel elevator, the first thing that you might notice is that the first floor is actually what would be the second floor here in the US. Usually the very first floor of a European building is called the ground floor, and then everything else just increases numerically from there. And here's a bonus difference. You're... I feel like you're too, no? Ground and... Uh... It depends where you're staying at. Yeah. Some places follow different. Europeans dress very fancily. I mean, seriously, dude, all of these stores were in the Rome airport alone. It's just a never ending sea of overpriced designer apparel. Like, it's actually a little intimidating how well they dress. I just want to wear my Under Armour Freedom American flag shirt with some pajamas, dude. Like, what the heck? It's not that deep. You don't have to dress up for a job interview every time you go to your local supermarket. You should see the things I've seen at my local Walmart. It's atrocious. Maybe don't go that far. You don't have to wear the suit every day. Oh, yeah, that's exaggerating. Yeah, I think that's, that's the thing about this video. I don't know if, you know, some people might not getting his humor i understand you know mm -hmm. when he's exaggerating and he's trying to be funny and he's pretty funny he's funny but i feel like a lot of people especially who you know not americans europeans watching this take what he s says for like oh this is what it is but he's really like mm -hmm. exaggerating he's trying to be funny europe they sound like and in america they sound like so they're different so obviously it's a little difficult to assign overarching also the lights are different uh here's blue and uh Blue and red in Europe is red and green. At least on the phone, it's red and green. The the cop lights. Differences to a diverse continent like Europe. So I try to choose differences that I believe do apply, for the most part, to most of the European countries, or if not, most of the countries in the European Union. So I hope you think I did a good job. Please be sure to support the video for free, Mike. Yeah, I think you did a good job. Mm -hmm. well, most of the difference I feel he he mentioned are uh, accurate. Mm -hmm. 
Guys, of course, let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord. And as always, 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 share as much as possible.